I'm not ashamed. What is the law of the peace offering? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of Leviticus on walking through the Bible. Of his word, the glory of his cross. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Leviticus chapter 7. We're going to be reading from verses 11 to 21. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Leviticus chapter 7, beginning at verse 11. This is the law of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which he shall offer to the Lord. If he offers it for a thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the sacrifice of thanksgiving unleavened cakes mixed with oil, unleavened wafers anointed with oil, or cakes of blended flour mixed with oil. Besides the cakes, as his offering, he shall offer leavened bread with the sacrifice of thanksgiving of his peace offering. And from it, he shall offer one cake from each offering as a heave offering to the Lord. It shall belong to the priest who sprinkles the blood of the peace offering. The flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offering for thanksgiving shall be eaten the same day as it is offered. He shall not leave any of it until morning. But if the sacrifice of his offering is a vow or a voluntary offering, it shall be eaten the same day that he offers his sacrifice, but on the next day the remainder of it also may be eaten. The remainder of the flesh of the sacrifice on the third day must be burned with fire. And if any of the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offering is eaten at all on the third day, it shall not be accepted, nor shall it be imputed to him. It shall be an abomination to him who offers it, and the person who eats of it shall bear guilt. The flesh that touches any unclean thing shall not be eaten. It shall be burned with fire. And as for the clean flesh, all who are clean may eat of it. But, a person, but the person who eats of the flesh of the sacrifice of the peace offering that belongs to the Lord while he is unclean, that person shall be cut off from his people. Moreover, the person who touches any unclean thing, such as human uncleanness, an unclean animal, or in any abominable unclean thing, and who eats the flesh of the sacrifice of the peace offering that belongs to the Lord, that person shall be cut off from his people. In our last four episodes, we dealt with the laws concerning the four types of sacrifices already talked about in Leviticus, the burnt offering, the grain offering, the sin offering, and the trespass offering. These laws expanded on what was already revealed earlier in Exodus or in Leviticus. We now come to the fifth offering, the peace offering. If you recall from chapter 3, this offering is sometimes called the communion offering because it is the only sacrifice that is allowed to be partaken of by the one who brought it to be offered. Every other sacrifice once offered, what was left over belonged to the priests. Not so with this sacrifice. For it is the sacrifice of peace and communion between God and all who sacrificed it. We found that the animals that were to be offered for this sacrifice were either to be from the herd, the flock, or a goat. No birds were allowed to be offered for this sacrifice. But apart from the preparations and sacrifice of these animals, no other specifics were given. Here in chapter 7, we find that there were three types of peace offerings, each containing its own separate instructions. Some peace offerings were offerings of thanksgiving for what God had done for them. If this was the peace offering being offered, then... Uh, along with the animal being sacrificed, he was to offer either unleavened cakes mixed with oil, unleavened wafers anointed with oil, or cakes of blended, blended flour mixed with oil. Along with that, he was also to offer leavened bread. From this sacrifice, he would offer one unleavened cake as a, as a heave offering. A heave offering was one that was raised once towards heaven. This would belong to the priest who sprinkled the blood of the peace offering around the altar. The flesh of this offering was to be eaten by the one who offered it. From the language in this section, as it concerns the unclean, it can be surmised that this sacrifice was also allowed to be shared among the friends of the one making the offering. The peace offering of thanksgiving was to be eaten of the same day, with nothing left until morning. The other two types of peace offerings were that of the completion of a vow as well as voluntary peace offerings. They would be treated the same. The only difference between these last two types of peace offerings and the first type was how long the meat could be eaten for. For the peace offerings that were made voluntarily or concerning vows, the meat may be eaten of on the second day, while any remaining after that must be burned on the third day. If it is eaten on the third day, the sacrifice wouldn't be accepted by God, and the person would bear his guilt, having sinned before God. Moreover, God gave instructions concerning uncleanness and this sacrifice. We haven't yet gotten to various ways mankind can be unclean. That will occur later on in Leviticus. But let's remember the peace offering is a holy offering to the Lord. 
Therefore, if it touches something that is unclean, the meat is now unclean and was to be burned. If it was eaten by those who were unclean, the penalty for that was that they were to be cut off from among the people, meaning that they would be cast out from among the people. That is a serious penalty for breaking this command, but it shows how holy the sacrifice is. In order to eat of it, one couldn't be unclean. If one was unclean, it's not that they would be cast out for being so, so long as they didn't eat this sacrifice. That was an important lesson for Israel to learn. They needed to follow the commandments of the Lord. Before closing, though, I'd like to notice one thing that helps us in our understanding of Jesus rising from the dead the third day in the New Testament. When referencing the peace offering sacrifice, there was the day the sacrifice was offered, the next day, and the third day. The day the sacrifice was offered could have been at any point during that day. That was day one. The next day would have referred to all of the next day, and then the third day would be the day after that. So Jesus died on Friday, was in the grave all of Saturday, and rose the third day, Sunday. Even though this passage was, designed to, was not designed to teach this principle, it does help us understand an issue that has confused many Christians today concerning the resurrection. With that, our time is up today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Leviticus chapter 7, verses 22 to 27, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.